Well, here we are again in deepest, uh, darkest Suffolk, and it's as uh, as cold as you like in here. So I'll be wearing my cap to cut down on glare and keep my head warm. And we're going to look at this um, this uh, EX5500, uh, and I'm going to show you how to diagnose uh, a no output problem on one of these. The one we've got here has got nothing wrong with it at all, so we're just going to pretend. But uh, before we start unbolting anything or doing anything at all to it, there's a couple of little tricks that we can try first uh, without even getting the spanner out. So uh, I'll just start it up. Uh, excuse the hissing in the background, that's the extractor that's uh, going to hopefully keep us all alive while we just run this. Um, this one's on gas, but it makes no difference to, uh, to what we're going to do. And also this one happens to be the K2 model with a single circuit breaker there. The K1 has two circuit breakers up, up the front, but as far as this uh, fault diagnosis, it makes very little difference at all. So we'll, uh, we'll just get on with it and I'll start this machine. Turn it around so you can see the back of it. Okay, well we've turned it around, so we're looking at the business end. We just need to take off a few bits to be able to get to the back of the alternator to do some tests. So we're going to start off by taking this grill off. We want to undo these two screws here and take them out and just loosen these two. So. Loosen those, like that, like that, like that, so out of the way. Okay, and then you've got two more screws down the bottom here. So you grab hold of the panel, and you those two screws. And that's that panel off. Okay, the next thing is this air guide we'll need to take off. Four screws in it, easy piece. off and under that is a thing that looks like a sort of goldy coloured donut held on with three screws you need to take that off too okay let me get that out of the way okay if we can just uh, zoom in on this kind of area here please pen That should do us. That should do us. So what we've got here, so the point is, there we go. This thing here is the AVR, automatic voltage regulator. Okay, and then 
you probably haven't got this 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 gubbins here on your machine because this is just some fused protection that's been added for that diode because these machines have a nasty habit of that diode going short circuit so uh, that's just some fused protection that's been added or if you've got a K1 machine you've probably got a um, rectangular shaped AVR sitting about here with a, di a diamond on it but, but what we're going to do it makes a little difference um, now uh, the first thing we want to just do is just physically a quick look and see if you can see any burn marks or any of those bindings broken because if those bindings are broken or you've got burn marks that's a pretty good clue that you've got stable problems that part of the windings there is actually the stable okay the next thing we want to look at is the brushes now on this particular model the brushes are we're just going to unplug this in fact what we'll do we'll take the AVR off altogether because we'll be able to see everything so much better so it just unplugs there there's a single wire to it there that unplugs and then there's two wires here that go on the brushes white to the right red to the left it's marked positive and negative on the brush set so they just pull off Oh, in theory, oh there we go. Right, and then you've just got two little screws that hold it in place. So we'll take that AVR right off and we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Okay. Now, can we, uh, oh, that's fine, I'll put the torch on it. Just here, this is the brushes that take the voltage from the AVR and put it onto the rotor which is the bit that spins around in the middle. So now if we're looking at these brushes, you can see this, see these two wires on the brushes? They've got a nice kind of arch to them. But just, just seeing that's telling me that those brushes are nice and new and what not worn out because if they were stretched flat across the top of the brush holder there, that would suggest that the brushes are worn away and the wire has been pulled right down deep into them. But we'll just take the brushes off just to have a, a sort of manual inspection of them as it were. So I'll just one, only, only one, only one bolt that holds it all on. And just uh, take those brushes off. And uh, well, oh, let's give it a shot. There you go. You can see they're springing nicely. They're nice and even. And uh, there's just no problem with those brushes. I can see that straight away. But now. What you've got in here that I've got no way of really actually showing you on the video is on the, what these brushes actually touch onto is two slip rings, two brass slip rings on the, just in here on the end of the rotor. We can get a torch in there and just check that they look nice and clean. If they're all black and mucky or corroded then it's going to be very hard for the, these brushes to make a proper contact on them. So, have a look in there with the torch. If those brushes, if those slip rings look all black and rather than nice and brassy and shiny, you might want to get a bit of um, silver polish or um, crocus paper or something. Something really fine. You don't want to rough them up and just uh, get on this bolt here. Maybe take the spark plugs to make the machine easier to turn over. Get on this bolt here with a with a ratchet, turn it over while you're holding the crocus paper or the silver polish on it, and just get rid of that corrosion okay now when you've uh, when you've done that you might find that it's worth just popping it you know popping it all back together and trying it because uh, corroded slip rings especially if it's been standing for ages and you've got problems then corroded slip rings are a are a good um, good thing to check so anyway I'll just pop this brush set back on for now now we've just talked about all of that Okay, now the other the other thing to check is the resistance of of the rotor. 